So yeah, so I'm going to deliver this talk to India Sign Language today, and I have a shame with me who will be the voice for my talk. I hope you get a good experience and something new. So today, I'm going to talk about my life, my work experience, and the profound experiences that have actually been me what I am today. My journey of life starts just like any other story. A daughter born in a middle class family of Delhi. I was the third children and the youngest one. As I usually say about the youngest children, the most pampered one and the well attended. One on the other hand, I was mischievous and non gallant just same like as any other would. You can see that I was too fond of stuffed toys. I was so fond of stuff like that the latest one that I got was on my 21st birthday. Like we all have these fascinations and imaginative impulse, I also used to dream of going to wonderlands and to far away places closest to nature. I would call these our common aspiration. And I also made my bucket list skydiving, jump, uh, bungee jumping, and whatnot. Come, we all have them. But then the path of my life goes to another direction. This path wasn't very different, but yes, different enough to give me another direction. My two elder siblings are deaf. I was born in a family where sign language was as important as any other language. I remember crawling and pulling my sister's skirt because at that very time, I knew how important it was for me to talk in sign. I started liking the, the secret language between me, my brother and sister. We used to talk for hours and nobody would ever figure out that what we were talking. I became fond of cars and bikes because my brother was crazy for them. I remember interpreting those startler serials for my sister. Oh well, they are the best sibling one could ever ask for. And sign language became my mother tongue and I was too proud of it, always. One very profound, the inspiration and the contentment that I got from signing made me feel that is, this is going to be the very profound experience of my life that is going to be with me for the rest of my life. In one way, sign language had already defined me. But more than that, rather than just being at the receiving end of this experience, I opened for it out of a passion. I had already decided the most important part of my life. I chose what made me feel motivated about myself as a person and not what society is trying to make me in its ready-made boxes. I chose my own way. As in words of eminent Iranian scholar Dr. Ali, my father chose my name and my ancestors chose my last name. That's enough. I chose my way. So now, I would like to talk about a little more about the journey of my life. Back in my college days, I did BBA as a was major specializing in travel and tourism from IP University. Back in university, we were told about how to become successful in our careers. Being a business student, we were constantly reminded why getting good scores were important and that why we should have sound knowledge of this technical stuff that we were taught. Usually these part to success speeches were very uniform in its content. It revolved around numbers. I was not very fond of number and statistics did not really convince me. For me it was about quality and passion, something that hit me inside. I love my sibling and that is how the sign language became an integral part of my life. I started learning sign language like I don't even remember the age that year old.
but I never realized that I am an interpreter. I was like 16 years old when National Association of Deaf asked me to go and do interpret on the National Disability Day for like 10,000 people. But well, even then, I never imagined me being a social entrepreneur. One day, another profound experience gave me the direction which made me what I am today. I was out shopping and I met one deaf person who was selling products made by an NG. Upon seeing me, he came to me and asked me that he has saw me signing in an event. He further asked me if I can offer him a job since he does not like the manual labor work that he was doing. That one incident made me rethink and that's how I decided to start a Tullekala. So, you see my life. So you see my life and a little bit success that I have achieved but never due to the degrees or standards set by the society of being successful. It was love, feeling, motivation and dream. And more than that, you can see that how a single cause has consciously made me passionate to work and not get exhausted. According to Vijay Nebre, we are the sum total of our experiences. Those experiences, be they positive or negative, make us the person we are at any given point in our lives. And like flowing river, those same experiences and those yet to come continue to influence and reshape the person we are and the person we become. None of us are the same as we were yesterday, nor we will be tomorrow. Similarly, when I was interpreting, after completing my interpretation, I came down from the stage and almost 10 12 people came and signed me, thank you. I asked them, why are you thanking me? They said, all these words that they were saying since few, a few hours, we would have not understood if you were not interpreting. That night, I decided that the sign language is not going away from me, no matter what I become in my life. I think that also helped me to, for forming Atullekala. What is Atullekala? Why Atullekala? I had experience of working with NGOs and advocacy sector, and my experiences told me that our country needs something beyond this, something that will make it more inclusive. I started Atulya Kala almost three years back with the single aim of giving India its very first brand which is managed by and also started working as a design studio. And now, I very proudly say that we are the first ones to create design by deaf designer and market in the urban area. It was a tough decision for me to decide whether to go for the NGO model or for the profit one. I took time and decided if I talk about breaking the stereotypes, then it starts right here. We were very much focused on making sign language, language for all, bringing art for change, design for change. We have used the design as a tool to bring inclusion. So now, I would like to talk about Indian Sign Language and Hearing Loss. So what is Hearing Loss? Hearing Loss is not usually that we hear in a layman term when people cannot hear. Hearing Loss refers to the limitation that hearing individual experience by not being aware of deaf ways being in the world. The reason that I believe that why hearing loss is misinterpreted is because of the whole model of single point perspective in our country. Not only the point of view, but the way how it is so stubbornly 
held on to its definitely one of the reasons why death and science are still not part of our society. Just how for million years we used to believe that Earth is the center of the universe, again because of the single point perspective. Talking about phonocentrism, hearing, speech, language is interchangeable. I do agree with this field of study, but I believe that here we need to expand our thinking. Because based on research and studies, it has been found that human brain processes languages equally whether the input is auditory or visual, science or verbal. The process happens on the same level. India has the largest population of deaf in the world, almost 18 million. <coughs> Imagine when we speak about the potential of Indian youth, how can we let go such big numbers from that potential? We must let go extremism and start embracing all that we have. That we feel is right. Now, I would like to conclude my talk with these beautiful words by Dr. King. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of the skin, but rather by the character, the content of their character. And I also have a dream that we all will be able to live in a nation where the people who speak or sign can live together and not be judged on the basis of their communication, but by the content of their heart. Thank you.